Is money the root of all evil or the pursuit of happiness? This is a question that Americans ask themselves every day. I even ask myself this question every day. So you think that money is the root of all evil? Have you a- ever asked what the root of money is? Money is a tool of exchange, which can't exist unless there are goods produced and men able to produce them. Money is the ca- material shape of the principle that men who wish to deal with one another must deal by trade and give value for value. Money is not the, th- not the tool of the moochers who claim your product by tears or of the looters who take it from you by force. Money is made possible only by the man who produce. Is this what you consider evil? Does thinking about time rather than money influence how effectively individuals pursue personal happiness? Laboratory and field experiments reveal that impli- implicitly activating the construct of time m- motivates individuals to spend more time with friends and family and less time working behaviors that are associated with greater happiness. In contrast, implicitly activating money motivates individuals to work more and socialize less, which, although productive, does not increase happiness. Receiving money, especially extra or or unexpected money, can make us happy, but the happiness isn't enduring or it doesn't last very long. It doesn't contribute to raising our overall level of happiness unless we can find a way to use that money to improve our ourselves or our lives in a meaningful, more permanent way. Essentially, using it as an investment in our own happiness, this is possible. The short-lived joy will be replaced by an incremental rise in our life satisfaction and happiness level. We can rise to the next step on the staircase. So is making money the American pursuit of happiness? In your pursuit of happiness, there are many things to learn. Here's some comments and advice on things you'll probably try out, and some ideas for things you may not have thought to try. Information and ideas to steer you in a positive direction in in these areas of the pursuit of happiness. Color and emotion. Colors surrounding you in your home and colors you wear impact your emotions. Did you know that each color has a different vibration, and they really affect our health and emotions? You've heard the expression seeing red, referring to anger. Do you feel serene in a green wood or forest? What are the helpful, unhelpful choices of color in your pursuit of happiness? Music and emotion. Have you noticed that different types of music affect our moods? What is it about a syncopated beat that makes people jittery? How can waltz music be so good for you? Have a peek at how different types of music affect your aura. See why musical music, classical music lifts your mood in a way that doesn't lose energy. Why is rock music associated with sex and drugs? What is the wise choice of music to help you in your pursuit of happiness? Emotions and aromatherapy. Did you know that different aromas have an effect in our mood? You might be familiar with lavender as a calming tool. What are the aromas that can help you in your pursuit of happiness? Yoga and emotions. Have you ever practiced yoga? Can yoga affect your emotions? How does it do that? Well, I think it's to do with the mind-body connection. Whenever I finish a a yoga session, I feel energized and relaxed at the same time. Happiness is pets. Some people say happiness is pets. Certainly, pets can do a great deal to increase your overall level of happiness and well-being. Studies have shown benefits of pets for people who live alone. I've certainly enjoyed my time with the various dogs I've had. Having a dog encourages you to get fresh air and exercise, which releases releases endorphins, the hormones that make you happy. Wealth and happiness. Wealth isn't necessary for happiness, and it doesn't necessarily mean happiness but it certainly makes life easier to have all the things you need and want available. The key is to remember that some rich people are happy and others are unhappy. Some poor people are happy and some are unhappy. So is making money the American pursuit of happiness? Happiness without money. Oversaving does not lead to happiness. While it's important to save for the future and to cope with current emergencies, Research shows that oversaving can actually have a negative impact on your quality of life. If you're meeting your goals for saving, it's okay to spend some on the things that make you happy. Experiences tend to make us happier than material things. We have different reactions to the money we spend on experiences and the money we spend on material goods. When we spend on experiences, our perceptions are magnified, meaning we feel happier or sadder than when we spend on stuff. And the feelings tend to linger longer, and since most of our experiences are positive, spending on activities instead of things generally make us happier. When we lower our expectations, our happiness increases. High expectations come when we compare ourselves to others or when we're bombarded by advertising. We come to accept the things we see see on TV as as normal. 
And because we don't have these things, we feel inadequate. Our expectations rise, and that before long, we're caught up in lifestyle inflation. But if we can consciously manage our expectations, both financial and otherwise, we can increase our sense of well-being. True wealth isn't about money. True wealth is about relationships, about good health, and about continued self-improvement. True wealth is about happiness, ultimately. It's more important to be happy than it is to be rich. These are all facts that Americans have discovered over the years. But the question still remains unanswered for many Americans. Is money the root of all evil or the pursuit of happiness? What is your opinion on this intriguing subject? I did a, sur a school survey along with my research. My first question was, do you think money is the root of all evil or the pursuit of happiness? Most students and teachers answered both. About 15% answered pursuit of happiness and 25% answered root of all evil. My second question was, how much of your daily activities revolve around money? The answer to this question didn't surprise me since most of American adults and teenagers work on a daily basis to make money. Most students and teachers answered at least 60% of their daily activities revolve around money. My third question was, can you be happy without money? Many Americans would like to think that they can be happy without money. But in reality, material things cause money and material things make people happy. You need money to buy food, clothes, Christmas presents, birthday presents, and so on and so on.